Hey, Australia's Apollo Laser, the drone killer that powers itself. A weapon so advanced, it can wipe out 200 enemy drones. No ammo, no smoke, no sound. Just a silent beam of light vaporizing targets instantly. Meet Apollo, a 150 kilowatt high energy laser by Electro Optic Systems, EOS the same company behind the Slinger. It's compact, mobile, and already sold to a NATO country, not a decades-long prototype. This thing can hit multiple drones per minute, costs pennies per shot, and flips the economics of air defense. Sure, it's not perfect, weather and power limits still matter, but for drone warfare, Apollo might just redefine the battlefield. Hey everyone, Welcome back to Skyjet Wings. I'm your host, a military veteran and defense analyst who's seen enough classified slides to know when the hype is real. On this channel, we break down military innovation and the Ukraine war from a frontline perspective. And today, it's all about lasers, real combat-ready systems that can fry a drone mid-air in a blink. Trust Australia to go from venomous wildlife to a laser cannon named Apollo, the god of light. Modern battlefields are flooded with cheap, deadly drones. Ukraine, Gaza, the Red Sea, where a $400 FPV drone can threaten multi-million dollar kit. Traditional air defense was not built for swarms, so militaries need fast, cheap counters. Directed energy answers that need. Lasers hit at light speed and cost pennies per engagement if you can supply power. Apollo is a 100 kilowatt class laser scalable to 150 kilowatts, basically dozens to hundreds of microwave ovens worth of focused energy in one beam. How Apollo fights swarms? At 100 kilowatts, it can disable 20 plus UAS per minute in demonstrations and is designed to defeat Group 1 through 3 drones, small FPV up to larger tactical UAS. It can also disrupt sensors at much longer ranges to break swarm coordination. Power and logistics? Apollo is built to be mobile or containerized, and when connected to external power, it can fire almost indefinitely but it also carries internal stores that EO says allow 200-plus engagements when isolated. That internal energy makes it unplugged for deployments that lack grid support. Limits and reality check? Weather, rain, fog, dust reduces effective range and dwell time. Reflective coatings, ablative sprays, or simply rapid maneuver can increase the required dwell time and blunt effectiveness so lasers are a major tool, not a magic bullet. Strategic impact. EOS already won a NATO export order. That validates the tech is moving from lab to battlefield. For counter drone defense, Apollo changes the economics. Cheap shots, rapid engagements, and mobile deployment make swarm attacks far less attractive. Apollo is built to take down what NATO calls group one to three drones from small quadcopters to tactical UAVs the size of a car, and it does it with precision and style. The entire system fits into a standard 20-foot shipping container with two laser emitters that rise from the roof like the world's angriest periscopes, ready to track and burn targets up to 3 kilometers, 1.86 miles away. But here's the wild part. Apollo can also blind enemy drone sensors from 15 kilometers out. Even if it doesn't melt the drone, it can make it useless, like taking the eyes out of a swarm before the fight even begins. And it's fast, rotating 60 degrees in just 700 milliseconds, quicker than a human blank. With that speed, Apollo can engage up to 20 small drones per minute, 
and since it's a directed energy system, there's no reloading, no ammo limits, just power and precision. If Apollo hooks to external power, it can fire indefinitely. Cut the grid? No problem. Its internal power pack lets it take out 200 drones on battery before needing a recharge. Somewhere, a Russian logistics officer just fainted. Mobility is a major win. Truck mountable, containerized, or fixed to a base or hill, Apollo gives full 360-degree coverage and can engage from above, which matters if you don't want drones dropping grenades on your roof. It also integrates with NATO C2, think Link-16, and slots into layered air defense alongside missiles, autocannons, and guns. In short, it's powerful and cooperative, a rare combo in defense gear. Electro-optic systems isn't new to this game. We've talked about them before. The company's been perfecting laser and optical tech for decades. Their resume includes remote weapon stations like the Slinger and high-precision space tracking systems used worldwide. Apollo is the result of all that experience, decades of optical engineering now weaponized into a counter-drone system built for real-world combat. And that's the hard part. It's easy to melt steel in a lab. It's a whole different challenge when it's 115 degrees in the desert, dust everywhere, and your target's a pizza box-sized drone zipping by at 90 miles an hour. Apollo was designed to survive and perform in that chaos, and that's where things start to get strategically interesting. Apollo has already been exported to a European NATO country. EOS won't name it, but let's just say, if you border Russia and like kangaroos, congratulations! That deal is historic, the first ever export of a 100 kilowatt class laser weapon. And here's the clever part. Apollo is ITAR free. That means it's not bound by U.S. export restrictions, giving foreign buyers the freedom to purchase, integrate, or even locally produce it without needing Washington's approval. For allies frustrated by America's arms export red tape, that's a breakthrough. It means autonomy, speed, and control, the real currencies of modern defense markets. And quietly, Australia's defense sector is stepping into the big leagues. Alongside Sweden, Denmark, and Germany, it's producing some of the world's most advanced defense technologies, from autonomous systems to missile partnerships and now laser weapons like Apollo. Most countries are still testing prototypes. Australia is already shipping operational Apollo units overseas. That's production reality, not vaporware. What it means for the battlefield, the skies are getting far deadlier for drones. Swarm tactics meet directed energy defenses. AI-driven drones learning to evade versus lasers using AI to track and neutralize them faster than humans can blink. We've already seen improvised jammers in EW in Ukraine. Lasers look like the next phase. Picture an invisible dome over a front line. Incoming small UAS disappear silently before they drop a payload. No shrapnel, no smoke, just sudden disappearance. Terrifying, fascinating, and strategically disruptive. But every leap brings moral and strategic questions. Higher energy lasers make warfare more automated and less visible. What happens to deterrence when hundreds of targets vanish with no visible shot fired? And if lasers scale upward, who's policing the temptation to push past counter-drone use into blinding satellites or aircraft optics? That boundary is a real worry. For now, Apollo's mission is simple and clear. Keep the sky clean of enemy drones. It's fast, clean, economical, and importantly, it already works in the real world. If you're operating cheap kamikaze drones near a 20-foot container marked Team Defense Australia, maybe call in sick that day. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that like button, subscribe to Skyjet Wings, and turn on the bell so you don't miss our next deep dive into the future of military tech.